Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be looking at a kit from a manufacturer that I've really not seen anything from before called, and I hope I'm saying this right, Smear. It, specifically their 148 scale MiG-17, PF, PFU, and LEM-6, which is a nice wide array of options just from one kit. So let's get into it. Now, uh, right out of the bat, um, the casting of the pieces are all fairly well. Um, there is some flashing in a couple spots, but it's not terribly bad. Uh, all the detail is engraved and is fa fairly nicely done. Uh, no real complaints there. Uh, one issue that does jump out at me is how the uh, horizontal or the vertical tail is assembled it's just basically two flat pieces of plastic that are sort of glued together there's no um, mark locator pins or anything like that which is unfortunate as that's going to make getting that piece aligned very difficult but still doable just a lot harder uh, you do get two options for the uh, underside and the front area where, where the nose gear is excuse me uh, one for the missile only variant and one if a variant for cannons. Uh, personally, I, I like the look of this variant as uh, this generation of MiG aircraft to me just always screamed as a gunfighter. Uh, uh, moving on, you're also given several different uh, missiles and the like as well as rocket parts down here. Uh, intake is made of these two pieces as well as the nose cone. Moving on, uh, wing assembly is a little better as you do get some, well actually I take that back, there are no locator pins as well on the wings, that's another downside. Uh, landing gear bay, on the main, for the main gear at least, is adequate, ugh, excuse me, adequately detailed. Um, obviously it could be more, could be less, but no, it's passable for out of the box. Uh, horizontal tail surfaces seem a little undersized, but I could be wrong. I'm not, I won't lie, I'm no expert on uh, MiGs. Uh, side panels are fairly nicely done. Um, you get a decent amount of detail parts, which are located on the other sprue for detailing them up that, to the point where it actually looks pretty decent. And you'll see later once we get to the instruction manual. Uh, looks like the stick on this one, unfortunately, broke. But it, it broke at a point where it's an easy fix. Uh, similarly detailed in the landing gear doors. And landing gear seem a, a little on the thick side. Moving on to our clear parts, which for some reason also includes the instrument panel, uh, which to me, you know, it offers opportunity if you wanted to do LEDs and the like, so you could have the cockpit lit up, but otherwise it seems a little erroneous. Uh, the rest of the clear parts, especially the canopy and windscreen, are, seem a little on the thick side, and the detail seems a little not very crisp and clean as compared to the rest of the plastic. Uh, it, other clear parts are otherwise alright. Uh, nothing really jumps out. <clears throat> as far as markings go, uh, you're given several different options. Uh, the decals are all very crisp and clean and good register. Uh, definitely well done in this regard. Uh, I'm not sure who prints them, but there's no yellowing or anything like that. So, definitely good job on the decals. Now, moving on to the instruction sheet. Their choice of doing the paint callouts is really confusing, as you're given this letter system and 
for the life of me, I, it took me a while to actually find where they reference them all, which is back here. It would have been nice if they did this up front, just so it's a little easier to find. Otherwise, you're given the different ones in uh, guns of colors. But as far as the build-up goes, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing that really stands out. Uh, I do like, uh, as I said, they give you uh, different options and tells you for which aircraft they're used, which are very nicely and clean and obvious so you don't goof up, which is always nice. Uh, do like the fact they tell you some places where you can add weight to, as well as this is another one that's probably going to be a tail setter. Uh, lots of little detail parts all throughout the build, which is nice to see in an out-of-the-box build. Excuse me. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, as far as the landing gear, though, you're going to ha have some, do a little finagling in terms of getting these angles correct. Especially if you want to do this as a competition bird. But other than that, uh, nothing really jumps out at me as far as uh, complexity or gotchas. Uh, moving on, we've got several different schemes. Fortunately, I'm not sure what language they're in, so I couldn't tell you um, which one's which. And I think this is a Middle Eastern bird, this is Europe, and this one I know definitely is a uh, Polish. Personally, I think this one looks would be the one that I ultimately build. But other than that, so yeah. Uh, what I think? Well, I picked this kit up off of a Spoo Brothers um, bargain bin section because I figured what the hell, I'd take a chance. Overall, though, I, it's a pretty decent kit. I mean, it's definitely got its flaws, but it does look like it'll build up to a pretty respectable aircraft model. Um, yeah, other than that, though, there's not really that much else I can say about this kit. Um, definitely one to look, uh, excuse me, look into if you're uh, interested in Russian aircraft and are looking for a MiG-17 and those variants, but otherwise, I'd say it's one you could get, one you don't, but you don't need to get, I guess what I'm saying. Get it if you want it, if you don't, it's not it's one you, you'll regret not getting. So, until uh, next time, uh, this was a look at the Smear 148 scale MiG-17 BF, PFU, and Lim 6M.